The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world but to forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Quite often we have days in our life that are kind of etched in our brains. Usually those days are there because something significant has happened. We got married. Our children were born. Perhaps somebody passed away. But when those events take place, for many, those days are always marked in our brains. But seldom are just the everyday, normal sort of days ever etched there. But for me, it was December 17th, 1977. It was a Saturday. I had a cousin who played hockey and an uncle who coached hockey. And I really couldn't stand hockey. I didn't understand it. But inevitably, in the winter months when we would go to the house and it was hockey season, there would be a hockey game on TV, which was just a horrible, horrible thing for me. Because winters in Pennsylvania left you out, didn't allow you to be outside very much. You could go out for a while, but the cold would bring you back in. And so the refuge was TV. But it was no refuge at all when there was a hockey game on. For as I was, far as I was concerned, a hockey game made about as much sense as a game of high lie or watching a game of cricket. I had no interest. So back to December 17th. My father and I were working at the Civic Arena in the basement in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Western Pennsylvanian Sportsman Show. My father had a table there. And we had been there since about 7.30 in the morning doing our thing. As the evening approached, my father asked me if I'd be interested in going to the hockey game, which was upstairs in the Civic Arena. Now, I had been up there just to look around. And what I noticed was they had these nice cushioned seats. The seats we had down in the basement were simply metal folding chairs and you can only sit on them for a while, but most of the time we were standing anyway. And the thought of being able to sit on a seat for a number of hours that was cushioned just seemed delightful. I could have cared less about the hockey. And so I got ticket and I went to the game and as I was there at the game, the Pittsburgh Penguins were playing the Montreal Canadiens. Now the Canadiens in the 70s were the premier team of the National Hockey League. The Penguins, well, to say that they were lousy would have been an understatement. And so as the game progressed, it was a 0-0 tie going into the second period. And in the second period, the Canadians scored, which everybody expected. And so there was sort of a collective sigh that took place. But soon after that, the Penguins were able to tie the game. And after that, the Penguins would take a 3-2 lead. 
which then would be equaled by the Canadians. In the third period, the Penguins were able to take a 4-3 to three lead and finally score an empty net goal to make the final score 5-3. to three. But the excitement and the electricity as the Penguins went to take the victory was something I had never experienced before. And at that moment, I began to understand the thing that I hadn't known before. And that was the excitement of hockey. That was why my cousin played it, my uncle coached it. That's why people watched it. It was no longer something like high lie for me. It was more along the lines of watching a football or a baseball game. It was something I just found very exciting. But I also understood then that I learned a lesson. And that lesson was just because I didn't understand something didn't mean I should dismiss it. Because just because I under, didn't understand it didn't necessarily make what I didn't understand wrong. You see, in today's gospel lesson, Peter learned that lesson. Peter learned that lesson quite vividly. You see, it was just last week. Peter became the superstar. Peter was the leader of the disciples. Peter was the one who was proclaimed the rock. He was disciple numero uno. None could do any better. And it all happened because he had this way of being bold and brash with his statements. He'd just say whatever was on the top of his head. And last week, he chose wisely. And this week, not so much. Peter went from the penthouse to the outhouse. And it was again one of those bold statements that instead of elevating him, cut him down. He went from cornerstone to Satan. And it wasn't because Peter was a worse person than he was last week. It was just that Peter didn't get it. He didn't understand. There's a lot of things in this world that I don't understand, things that take place that I just don't get. And yet they are still there. I don't understand why in this world where we can produce so much food just within this country, that there are people in this country that remain hungry. I don't get it. I don't understand how people can want to defund the police because the police are an integral part of our society in terms of keeping people safe. I don't understand why it's so difficult to prosecute those who have pledged to uphold the law for wrongs and crimes that they've committed. I don't understand when people are angry about situations within the world and see injustice and then turn to looting and rioting to be able to make their point. I don't understand how in a country where slavery was abolished well over a hundred years ago, that we still have systematic racism alive and well. I don't get it. I don't get how we can have an educational system that seems to be falling apart where poorer neighborhoods have horrible school systems up against richer neighborhoods and yet we're pulling money out of those systems to allow people to gain wealth through education. Not by being educated, but by making money educating the privileged. I don't understand how the people we elect to public office who are supposed to be working for the good of the country and the good of the people can't seem to get anything done because all they do is argue and quibble and take their positions and cast dispersions to one another as opposed to working for the good of the country, not understanding or believing that their way is the only way, their way is the right way. 
but understanding that through compromise and working together, the good of the country could be upheld. You see, Peter didn't get it either. Peter didn't understand it because he wasn't thinking about it in the right way. Peter was looking at what Jesus was telling him and he was only understanding it through Peter's way and not God's way. How often do we find ourselves in a world where we look at situations, we look at problems and we only understand it from our perspective and we don't try to understand it from God's perspective? While we look at things and we try to find what might be the easiest way out for us, we don't understand that God's way while it might be a more difficult way, is the right way. The right way to get things done, the right way to uphold society, the right way to care for people, the right way to see success within this world by making sure that all people are cared for in every situation in life. That the hungry are fed, that the homeless are found, home, found housing, that the naked are clothed, that the sick are healed that we use our resources to make sure that all people are upheld in God's world and in God's eyes. For it is God's way, not the easy way. It is God's way that tells us that we must take up our cross, which in and of itself tells us it's not going to be an easy way. It's not going to be Mark's way. It's not going to be your way. But when we call on living our lives in God's way, then we begin to get it. Then we understand our role in life. Then we can see what it is that we can do to make a difference within this world, to be able to correct the wrongs that take place, and to begin to understand the situations that others cry out from. For it is God's way that calls us to care. It is God's way that calls us to love. It is God's way that calls us to give. And for in the end, the question is singular. Do we choose our way? Or do we choose God's way? If we choose God's way, then we'll get to exactly where we need to go. And we will certainly be able to understand all that we need to know.